Very defensive and slow. And Trump is one of those players who have spent extensive time in handlock. So much so that top players even consider Trump one of the best handlock players out there. Yeah, on Firebat's side, I think it's interesting. Every single time I've seen him play this patron deck, he's immediately put out that turn two unstable goal. Uh, Admiral, do you have any ins insight as to why that might be? Yeah, Firebat's, he's one of these guys that really likes to get development on the board. And uh, a, big a big proponent of the fact that if you have stuff out, it means you can get value from it. Um, the other thing that happens is when you play your cards this way, it really gives your opponent a different perception of what your range is. You know, he's not always going to be playing unstable goal on turn two, but I think against more thinking players, he's more apt to play it in a situation like this, even if he doesn't have Acolyte of Pain to add right back behind it. Because what does Trump now think that he has? You know, Trump's a very clever player who is going to think about what his opponents are going to do, and maybe Firebat's trying to give him the illusion that he has his cards in his hand that he actually doesn't have. Sure. And force him into a line of play. You know, same thing as representing the Druid combo. Force him to a line of play where he has to be really defensive and suboptimal. You take a look at the Frothing Berserker also played on turn three here. It's something that uh, if his opponent had the proper response, he'd be able to answer it. But Trump chooses to pass. You can have the Frothing for a turn. Yeah, I think that's interesting. But Trump kind of realizes that it's unlikely that Froden's going to put like an Inner Rage, a Whirlwind, and just kill him outright. If Firebat, for some reason, decided he was just going to go all in right now, he'd probably get him to about 10, which would be right in Molten Giant range. So, yeah. uh, interesting to me that Trump didn't decide to put out the Twilight Drake. Uh, yeah, he wants to go for Twilight Drake now or into Mountain Giant now and then coin out the Sunfury Protector. Both are options. Second Mountain Giant is a pretty big pickup, I would have to say, for Trump. Yeah, I think he was looking at going Twilight Drake on turn four to turn five, Mountain Giant, Sunfury Protector and really putting Firebat to the test on exactly what his limits are. Um, and kind of seeing the way this hand is going to pan out, I think this is actually a pretty excellent plan. Doesn't have a lot of board clears. Uh, doesn't have a ton of utility in his hand. He's really just working off of big minions. So trying to get the most value you can out of these may be a good idea, but this is really where Firebat's going to try to do something about that. Uh, you know, I would suspect Battle Rage and Executor both coming this turn. Yeah, to get to be able to cycle through and keep the Frothing Berserker alive and get the damage in is pretty huge. 7 is still not that bad. Oh, sorry, 17 is not that bad for the Handlock to be in for the Warrior because they still can't play that Molten Giant any cheaper than they can play the Mountain Giant. Yeah, and now this is kind of a situation where Trump is really going to have to be careful. Yeah. Because, you know, these Iron Beak Owls, a lot of times you want to use these uh, in situations like uh, maybe on some Grim Patrons, maybe on an Acolyte of Pain. This isn't a card you just want to burn, but versus a seven, seven power Frothing Berserker, right. I'd be pretty hard-pressed to not Iron Big Owl this right now. Absolutely. I think Trump was, in a way, okay taking that damage because it helps accelerates the threat that we're talking about. You know, the threat train where you just keep whacking big minion after big minion. Um, and ultimately, he hopes that Firebat, by using things like Execute early on, can't get past the bigger minions of Taunts when he can lay it down in the future turns. Right, and on the follow-up turn, he does have that Mountain Giant, and as you guys pointed out, because Firebat went ahead and put that 7 into his face, he is also closer to the uh, being able to play the Molten Giants outright, and maybe this is kind of a situation he does want to be in, where he can just keep a steady stream of these big right. threats rolling out, especially, as you point out, his hand doesn't really have, like, Shadow Flame, there's no Hellfires. He needs to kind of get a little bit more on the aggressive, and Firebat's doing a really good job of making sure he keeps cards in hand uh, with these Battle Rages. Mm. Thanks, cute. Yeah, the Execute is also something that you have to be very careful with. The timing of it is so key because that's your last Execute, and then your opponent can play with the knowledge that you have no more Executes remaining in your deck or hand. Um, on the other side, too, Firebat's playing a little bit more aggressive because this is a bad matchup, generally speaking. The Handlock player is favored the longer the game goes. Wow, Firebat actually going to choose to take 8 damage. Maybe uh, even more. To put, to put some uh, 3 points of damage on right. that Mountain Giant. This is really interesting to me. This this sends a pretty darn big statement that Firebat, uh, he's kind of doing two things here. Number one, it really looks to Trump like he doesn't have an execute. And number two, that life that he's paying really is kind of inconsequential. Trump is not the aggressive deck in this matchup. Yeah, and I like that, um, I, I like that Firebat is constantly trying to seek ways to be aggressive because if he's given a chance to kill his opponent, he can. He still is missing that Warsong Commander, though, ultimately, which is really challenging because without the Warsong Commander, ultimately you're just a board control deck. You're not a deck that ultimately threatens to end the game. So as that's why you can see Firebat really aggressively cycling through his deck through Battle Rage. People are like, well, do you really want to use Inner Rage there? Do you really want to you know, toss out the Unstable Ghoul like that? And I think yes, because you have to cycle through your deck very aggressively in order to get to your win conditions. 
Yeah, these plays, Trump, Trump's very much giving some thought as to what he's supposed to read from these plays, because these are definitely not what you'd expect to be seeing from the patron player this early on. So Trump takes a fair bit of time trying to kind of figure out what he can get out of this. Mm -hmm. Decides if he should follow up with maybe a second Mountain Giant, but it looks like he wants to go with the Emperor Thor's hand, which overall is just across the board kind of the, the stronger, more consistent play. Well, I guess if you look at it, is there a better time to play Thorazin as the game develops more? Warzone Commander comes into the hand. That's That could potentially be very dangerous in the next coming turns. But I don't think this turn, it means anything, though. Yeah, I mean, that certainly is a big draw, though. I mean, Firebat now piecing together uh, quite a strong hand. You know, still has an execute, is facing down an Emperor Thorazin. But at this point, I think it's a matter of, you know, how exactly he thinks he's going to piece this damage together. Part of the problem is he has used an Inner Rage and he has used a Frothing Berserker. Uh, you know, that's one of the ways he's dealt so much damage and gotten to this point. But still pretty darn scary for Trump. You know, doesn't want to just get too crazy developing his board here. Doesn't want to overcommit to anything. Just a couple of draws could really change the outcome of this. Absolutely. But, you know, step number one is going to be getting through taunts if you're in Firebat spot. That's a really handy draw, I would have to imagine. It allows him to just get rid of that Mountain Giant very conveniently via the Cruel Taskmaster Battle Cry ability. Uh, and he can, yeah, he probably just has to armor up after that, but he clears board, puts down something of his own, and then can start looking to maybe equip that death by next turn and start setting up a possible lethal in the next couple turns. The problem with the current state of the game, though, is that Trump's at half health, meaning that Molten Giants will always be a threat. And Firebat's not necessarily well equipped to deal with more than one threat at the moment. He's going to have to pair it at one at a time. He can execute one, develop something else. Um, and then if Trump ever gets to the point where he's like playing molten, molten taunt, it's like, well, it's going to be really tricky to get past, especially that he just used one Frothing Berserker. Right, and he taps right here, but he can actually just play down both uh, Molten and Mountain Giant, and might be what he chooses to do. He does have the one Taunt Giver as well, so this would set up a big wall, and he knows that Firebat's already used one Execute, so right. how do you get past that second wall, basically? The most damage he could generate if uh, he's able to execute isn't enough though, because the for, the for, Frothing Berserker and the War Song and the Execute seven mana, so that only gives him one more mana whirlwind. Right. It would be surprised if we don't see Firebat equip a Death Fight and actually start hacking into these giants. His HP is high enough, and that's removal. You've got to get them off the board. Yeah, you really do. It's just it's just such an interesting interesting spot to be in to see Firebat so very willingly taking eight points of damage to that right. Dominion. Just to deal at half of its health. Yeah, and, and even more. I mean, this Mountain Giant could realistically deal 24 damage uh, in order for Firebat to find his win. And the biggest problem is Trump has the ultimate Trump card in the uh, Malganus. Yeah, I mean, that Defender of Argus also pretty significant pickup at this point. Yeah. He was out of Taunt Givers, but now he's got two Ancient Watchers, and he can make them five, six Taunts, which yeah, is a major huge. deal. I mean, prior to that, this game was actually looking like it could be pretty grim. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> uh, it happened. Yeah, <laughs> we so, keep ending up in Patron Town. Yeah, well, I mean, not really. We're still a couple miles away and running out of gas. I was more talking about what Admiral said. Oh, <laughs> oh. well, I, I thought we were just going on the metaphor because no patrons are yet to be seen. Sure, it's true. Population zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it looks like he's considering what you guys said, which just the ancient watcher or the ancient watcher, the ancient watcher. He doesn't play both now. He just makes one, three, four times. Yeah. He doesn't want to give any chance for his opponent to gain extra damage. And Firebat could be looking at game number one in the books here. Second game patron is not going to be any more helpful than the first one. Emperor Thor is in the stall for time. But he can't even play the no mission better to draw an extra card. This is looking very bad for Firebat. Yeah, let's see. So... He could possibly look at... I mean, I'm not sure he wants to do this. But he could look at Shadow Flame and the Ancient Watcher to get rid of the Emperor, uh, and then he doesn't have to trade any of his damage in, because it's a little bit clunky if he chooses to trade both the uh, boosted Sun Fury Protector and the Defender of Argus. So let's see, how much damage is he pushing? Yeah. All right, so he's still a little bit off lethal, probably a couple turns. Might just be better to play Malganus and trade the 3-3 three, three and the 2-3 in to get rid of Emperor Thor's hand just to be safe. That's at Firebat's hands right now. Uh, could generate quite a few patrons on the next turn, but he's going to be a very low HP. I like training both these minions as well, just making sure that uh, you, you don't give him more chances to empower the board than necessary. Although realistically, a three attack minion shouldn't be that big of a deal, but I don't mind the extra insurance. 
Also, look at Trump just being like aggressive to tap as much as you possible. Gotta get that like, value. He's he's been tapping every single turn he can, and in the face of the possibility that his opponent might kill him. Well, uh, this is really the big test. Is if Fireback can get this done. I mean, can make four Grim Patrons and they will have charge. But is that enough to really crash through all this? I mean, it, it will let him take out this Malganus, take out the Ancient Watcher, but he'd have nothing left afterwards. Yeah, he's going to need some extra help off the top. Trump sees that his opponent does have the uh, Grim Patron Warsong combination. Also, this is going to hurt a lot. Let's see what he actually does here, because he doesn't have the ability. But I can tell that, yeah, to make any more patrons, so this is... Oh, gotcha. He couldn't even uh, yeah. kill it off because he didn't go for the second Grim Patron, right? Yeah, I think so this is going to be game one to uh, Trump. Yeah, he felt like he needed that second Grim Patron to make better use of it, and Trump got the extra one point of damage in his hand. Starts out 1-0 versus the world champion. Yeah, and we kind of talked about before, and obviously this weekend has seen this matchup a lot. One of the best ways for Handlock to get ahead of the patron is to just end up drawing in really early into those big threats, and he kept putting them out, he kept making taunts, and Firebat drew into some combo pieces to maybe win the game. He drew into the patrons by the end, but he had taken so much damage trying to face those mountain giants with the axe that he was just in a really bad spot and unable to stabilize. Yeah, I think uh, ultimately when you look at uh, that hand that Firebat had, it had a lot of meat, but not a lot of like ways to support that meat, so uh, he got the most important parts, the Warsong Commander, the Grim Patron, the Frog and Berserker. Um, however, he was missing a lot of the keys that really made that engine go, right? A lot of the oil that, that adds and enhances to it, the whirlwinds. Um, he had to use his executes early on, and that has to do a lot with Trump making sure that he uh, places the threats and threat and continues to push onto his opponent. But also, I think it's a testament to the fact that uh, he was able to get those threats so consistently because he emphasizes things like tapping and making sure they can dig deeper into his deck so he has resources at all times to increase his option pool. And that's something that a lot of handlock players, they start they start uh, you know, backing away. They're a little bit shy. Like, I don't want to tap. I don't want to lower my health too much. Uh, I'm afraid of what this patron deck can do to me. And Trump took advantage of that and said, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And if he can kill me, fine. But at the same time, uh, there's, a, there's a slight chance that he won't do it. So I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah one of the strengths of handlock is that it's, Probably the only deck in Hearthstone that can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patron in terms of drawing cards, uh, allowing it to find those tools, as you said, and put out those big creatures, put up those walls, and then ultimately allow them to beat the Patron. Yeah, a big part of that, too, is also was Trump's patience in that one. You know, waiting to on the Twilight Drake, not corning it out straight away, and then allowing him to have the Mountain Giant into uh, Sunfear Protector afterwards, set up that big board. Yeah. You know, didn't have a lot of utility early on, but made the most out of his minions nonetheless. Right. Again, it, it, there's not a high chance that Firebat would have the killing combination. Generally speaking, you know, send the 80% of the time, he won't have that. But if he does have that one time, you know, you're regretting everything in life because you just threw away a game <laughs> with a favorable matchup. Now, on Firebat's end, I don't think he's stressing too much. Handlock's a really tough matchup. Um, I guess the only thing that he would be mad ultimately is that he ran that into the Handlock. But even then, even if Tempo Mage, for example, is playing that game, it'd still be a really tough matchup. Yeah, something that is really interesting about this matchup to me is um, you know, how, how uh, I'm sorry, Tempo Mage is going to line up versus the Hunter builds. You know, I would venture to say Firebat did not suspect a bunch of Hunters were going to be coming into this stage of the tournament. You know, not, not only with Secrets Paladin being so strong, but just with Warlock, Warrior, and Druid being so strong as they were. Trump's actually got a Hunter in his build, and he's also got Flare in that Hunter deck. That's so right. Tempo Mage might not be the most, you, you know, might not be like an easy matchup versus that deck this you know just yeah that that handlock winning match one may actually spell a bit of trouble for, for firebat well he does have what seems to be a favorable match for game number two here we got the druid up against the patron but it feels like druid has still been splitting games against patron despite the fact that we might feel otherwise and ultimately it could just be a 50 50 down the middle and we're just basically using our own anecdotal experience in order to to estimate the matchups. Yeah, Trump's opening hand, he has that wild growth, which he definitely wants. He might even keep the Azure Drake. Probably gonna send back that swipe and see if he can find something a little bit more proactive that allows him to build up the board. Uh, he does get rid of the Azure Drake, and his then ends up with a Shade and Force of Nature. Uh, two wild growths. <laughs> this might not be the best hand for Trump. Yeah, this may not have been exactly what he wanted to see. Um, you know, one wild growth into Shade into, like, say, a four drop would be pretty good, or maybe even innervate into a five or six drop. But in this position, you know, you're looking at turn two wild growth, turn three shade, turn four wild growth, Job and then done. no really action behind that unless he picks up something. Uh, meanwhile, Firebat's got a pretty excellent curve behind his hand. Uh, Trump, you know, with a couple strong pickups here, could easily 
be the one in advantage this round, but, uh, you know, these next couple of draws are really going to shake things up. Yeah, we'll see. Trump has to curve out, but Firebat taking a very aggressive stance once again. Um, just very interesting to see him be this aggressive. I knew Patron originally started off more as a defensive deck, and everyone was already like, Whoa, you play Farley Berserker on turn three, that's crazy! And you know, people started doing that more often and realizing that's pretty good, pretty standard. But Firebat's coining Armorsmith against Druid! Like, that's super aggressive. Yeah, I like, mean... What is Smith going to do, Nate? Well, it's really the threat of the, of what this means to, to Trump. Again, Trump is a very clever thinking player. And when he sees plays like this happening, he's going to consider how Interage works. He's going to consider how Cruel Taskmaster works. He's even going to think about, you know, do I need to kill these in the face of Acolyte? You know, he can't really discern exactly what Firebat's range is. And at the same time, Firebat will get a couple chips of damage here and there, and not to say it's that big a deal, but we've seen a lot of games decided this week over one or two points of damage. And so to see him be this aggressive early on, maybe that's part of the difference that's being made. Definitely can agree there. Well, he does have Acolyte to tuck behind the Unstable Ghoul, seeing if maybe that uh, that Wrath or that Keep of the Grove will make appearance yeah, This is not in draws cards. This is also one of the reasons, is when you find yourself in situations like this, it becomes very difficult for the defending player to really fight this off. Trump happens to have Wrath in this situation, but imagine if he didn't have that removal spell. He'd be looking at a lot of draws and a lot of armor for Firebat. Well, he still gets some armor. Or a little bit. Every little bit, according to what we've seen before, every little bit can really make a big difference. Yeah. And yeah, we see Trump does have that Ancient of War now, and he's going to curve right into it. Uh, doesn't even play the Darnassus Aspirin, goes for the Wild Growth, which is the sure thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're Trump, though, you have to be considering Ancient of War is a very big taunt. Obviously, you definitely want to put it out there, but you know Firebat has to execute, so... Right, and it's also scary, too, because not only does he have the execute potential, he's going to draw cards. Ooh, that's an interesting draw, though. That is an excellent pickup for Trump. He's going to be able to make these two Acolytes amount to a single card drawn, and I can tell you what, this deck is very reliant on drawing a lot of cards. Most of its deck uh, utility is dedicated to to cycling through and finding the right combinations of cards. Trump, however, is really considering the difference between making sure he denies draws and getting a 5-10 taunt on the board. The problem is, too, is if he goes ahead and just keep her of the groves and he silences the Acolyte of Pain, his choices for follow-up are, are either Hero Power and Darnassus Aspirin, and they just don't create as strong of a board as an Ancient of War. The Ancient of War is definitely a high-reward gamble if it pays off. If there's no Execute, if there's nothing that can punish it, he pretty much gets control of the board right then and there for a while. But if there is an execute, he spends seven mana to basically a one mana answer, and that's his entire turn. Yeah, I can tell you that play looks a lot better uh, just from a board state. Not even taking a look at the hands, just knowing your opponent has gotten one draw off of two acolytes is that's just a fantastic feeling. Yeah, getting out the Darnassus Aspirin this early feels good too. It's not going to be something that probably generates patrons for Firebat. Uh, and it does. It is a two-three, so it challenges most of what's on the board. Firebat's hand is again. It's it's kind of more geared towards winning the game. He has those two frothing berserkers. He might play one pretty soon. It's just you know you were talking about Frodan, kind of that tempo play, just to get something on the board. But for the moment, his hand's a little bit awkward. Yeah, I'm looking at if maybe he wants to shield block to draw through. But I'm also looking at what he can do board impact wise. But it seems like he had to part ways with a lot. Like, play Fathering Berserker, Cool Task, and Inner Rage. And that that is asking for a lot. Um, your opponent could swipe and you just toss away three cards that would help you activate Battle Rage to make it more useful. At the same time, Fireback could be like, well, he's dumped a lot of his hand. I'm going to dump a lot of my hand, and I'm just going to take it to the, to the next level by playing uh, an Ascended Frothing Berserker. Something what you've seen all weekend from these decks is them kind of get... You know, ground down to the felt, and then the last couple cards not really making that big of an impact and getting into a big top deck anymore. And it looks like we're headed down that direction right. again. Uh, Trump cannot play his 510 in the face of a Frothing Berserker that no. big. He's going he's gonna to Force of Nature. Yeah, now there's a chance he does Ancient Lore instead, but I think Force of Nature cleans up this board so nicely that it's pretty difficult to, to pass up this trade. Absolutely. Firebat's also okay with this ultimately because your opponent's using combo pieces to clear. Uh, he won't be threatened to kill you. He's also foregoing development onto the board. And ultimately, you probably won't win through one frothing anyways. It's going to be through Patron Flood and other things. God, look at the stress in Trump's face, too. This is such a big match for him. I mean, this is likely one of the biggest matches Trump's ever played. Uh, certainly. I knew that, yes, last year he was not happy at all. 
not being able to participate as part of the BlizzCon. Uh, the points and the way Swiss worked just didn't uh, end up lining up with Trump because he wasn't focused on it. And this year, I remember asking him, like, hey, is there anything you want to do this year, you know, goal-wise? He says, win BlizzCon. Yeah, I think that's a... I told me that in January. Goal. Yeah, I think it's a great goal. Yeah, ever since GBG has come out, uh, I've really seen him on his stream focusing so much more on Constructed. He's playing a lot of Paladin back in the day, a lot of Handlock, as people have said. And, uh, this has been just a totally different Trump in 2015 as far as his ambitions for the competitive scene. So I like that he kind of held off on that force of nature for a bit, gave it some more thought, made sure that's absolutely what he wanted to do. And, you know, you have a full turn timer. Go ahead and use it. These are very important matches. Don't feel like you have to rush it out there. Fire right, even considering what it means to be playing a grind battle hey, between test. development. And you continue to see it. Firebat always fights for the board. It seems like he will never give up a fight for the board almost no matter what. Yeah, at the same time, though, putting down that Frothing Berserker is very scary. Uh, obviously, he has a Grim Patron, and Grim Patron is one way you can beat Druid, but that Frothing Berserker absolutely hamstrings how much total damage you can do. So. Oh, man. Innervate Swipe. It's a possibility to remove yep. another threat off the board, and Firebat would just be left with only his Grim Patrons as a way to climb back into the game. I, I mean, at the same hard. time, you can also just say that Firebat corners himself by trying to be so aggressive, and if his opponent just happens to have the removal, the smaller percent of the time, hmm. it still ends up making him a loss. Yeah, I think that's a chance he's just willing to take. You know, more often than not, your opponent isn't going to have those removal spells, and when they don't have him, a lot of times you can find yourself very heavily punishing your opponents. In this last series versus Phone Tap, there was a couple situations where Phone Tap didn't have the answer and snowballed the game into some pretty easy victories for Firebat. Right. Wow, Trump holds back on the Innervate swipe. Says he needs to see a little bit more before that swipe comes out. And I can't really fault him. It's just a 2-4 right now. Firebat Thanks. doesn't have a lot of cards. Well, he may pay a major price for this one. That is a picture-perfect draw for Firebat. Yeah. The inner rage onto the patrons so that you can copy it. Uh, you have a couple of high health ones, and then you tuck it behind a stable ghoul. Uh, not to mention that the the keeper of the grove will also die, right? So that way he doesn't have um, a way to easily kill off these patrons. So that's going to mean Fireback could potentially just flood this board and then be able to ambush his opponent. This is one of the most difficult situations for Druids to deal with. However, Trump does have uh, Ancient of War in his hand. And Firebat doesn't have it execute at the moment, so there are a couple situations where Trump, even despite this Grim Patron wave, finds himself in an okay spot. He seems to have a drawer coming into his hand, not super relevant at the moment. Uh, Ancient of War could come down, but he sees Firebat is holding on to one card. And if that card is execute, I mean, that's It could terrible. be. He's been holding on to a card for a few turns now. Um, right. He didn't play it. When it's like very clear that he could have played other things. Hmm. Ancient of War isn't really a cure-all with this board either. You see the unstable ghoul down there. Oh, you create six power on the board just by attacking into yeah. this thing. I mean, this is the kind of situation that you find yourself in when you play for the board the way Firebat did. He wouldn't have been able to take out that uh, Keeper of the Grove, and he wouldn't have been able to have this gigantic Frothing Berserker out. It's almost kind of taunting Trump into swiping this board right now. He certainly almost needs to swipe. Um, well, hero-powering it and taking 11 is an option. And I, yeah, I guess you're right. He you couldn't honestly, hero power it down in an Ancient of War. <laughs> and honestly, I think that kind of play is right up Trump's alley. He understands the value of health versus cards and knows that in this matchup, you know, I mean, can you can you afford to swipe in this position? You're creating four Grim Patrons for your, for your opponent if you do. Definitely an arena play if you like hero power because it's like you want to play value-wise uh, and use your health as a resource, but... I ultimately think that you need to just not take that damage and try to grind your opponent out. You have much better cards ultimately, right? Well, he's facing down four Grim Patrons right now, and even with Emperor Thoris on, this is a dangerous situation to be in. This really hinges on the next two draws from Firebat. If he can pick up some strong utility. Oh! A whirlwind off the top. This is scary. This is very scary if you're in Trump's spot. Six Patrons will be on the board after this turn, and he's cleared off... Uh, well, he's cleared off uh, all the minions here. He's going to kill Emperor Thorson, I believe, unless he wants to go aggressive, but I'd still be scared leaving that up. Well, honestly, at this point, Trump's hand is so low on cards, and Firebat has six Grim Patrons on the board. You know, maybe he pushes his three health one into this Emperor Thorson, but does he need to kill it at this point? What's it actually doing to the board? It like, challenges his high health ones. Too. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the, that's going to be the tiebreaker for him is is what the possibility of that is. Right. With four healthy Grim Patrons out. I don't see a need to risk this whatsoever. Trump really needs to draw that second force of nature. 
yeah. right now. Well, the Ancient of Lore still put, provides a big wall. In fact, he can play two walls, the Ancient of War and the Druid of the Claw. And that seems to be a very good use of that Innervate right now, because before Innervate wasn't really that powerful. Yeah, if uh, Fire Rat's not sitting on the Execute, which we know he isn't, but assuming he doesn't draw into it, he's got slams. He's got two draws into it. He can right. draw off the top of his deck for the Where beginning of his turn. He can slam and go into it. Trump is taking no prisoners. He's charging down a full health Grim Patron and sending him back to Black Rock Mountain Adventure. That's where he belongs. <laughs> he's like, you picked the wrong game mode, friend. Oh, wow. All right, let's see. Let's see what the slam does. <laughs> slam and execute. Why would you put that Juju out there? How about into Whirlwind? I think that's oh, going to be good enough for geez. Firebat. Three more Grim Patrons getting made now. All right. And this oh. is, again, this was all a catalyst. <laughs> Trump's face. <laughs> the reaction, he can't believe it. This was all a catalyst from that Frothing Berserker that did not get swiped. Without that single card, you would not find this position in the game. Just also the fact that Trump created more patrons, which created even more patrons. Which got Whirlwind and created more patience. This is an absolute disaster. There's no way for Trump to really easily seize back this board. And Drew the Claw is, is just going to put a very temporary band-aid on the overarching problem that not only has he created patience three ways, he's got more patience the next turn with the Whirlwind yeah. effect off the Death Spite. Firebat's yeah. going to tie this series up at one game apiece, and this shows you the power of that aggressive play. If your opponents do not have the right answers, or even if they make some, I don't know, minor missteps perhaps, uh, you find yourself in very favorable spots, and that's what won Firebat the World Championships last year was, was that great aggressive play. Right, Firebat oftentimes makes these very aggressive lines within uh, the decks he plays, even with decks that are not necessarily designed to be as fast, and 